So now Pizzagate's been debunked, that must mean that anyone who talks about the connections between paedophilia and people in positions of power must be a crazy extremist conspiracy theorist, right? Wrong. In virtually every major paedophile bust in every major country in the world, top politicians, judges, celebrities, billionaires, and other members of the establishment are always connected. Conspiracy theory? Okay, let's take a look. In 2008, financier Jeffrey Epstein, whose friends included some of the most powerful people on the planet, was convicted of soliciting an underage girl for prostitution. According to Fox News, Epstein, quote, allegedly had a team of traffickers who procured girls as young as 12 to service his friends on Orgy Island, an estate on Epstein's 72-acre island called Little St. James in the US Virgin Islands. Why did Bill Clinton take at least 26 trips on the Lolita Express, Epstein's jet? ditching his secret service detail for five of those trips. A jet accuser say was equipped for sex with underage victims and was used to travel to Epstein's private island, nicknamed Orgy Island. Newly obtained documents show Clinton actually took at least 26 flights on Epstein's private jet to spots around the globe, though apparently not after Epstein's plea deal and jail time. On at least five occasions that they did travel together, Secret Service did not accompany Clinton. You don't just dismiss Secret Service detail. Paperwork has to be filed. There's an accounting of why the dismissal. In this case, there isn't paperwork, and the Secret Service is not responding to the FOIA request. Why did Clinton choose to continue his association with Epstein when, according to the Alliance to Rescue Victims of Trafficking, Everyone within his inner circles knew he was a paedophile. Why did Epstein have 21 different phone numbers for Bill Clinton? Who were the prominent people Epstein reportedly blackmailed by secretly recording them with these underage girls? Who are the, quote, powerful associates named by victim Virginia Roberts that US authorities allegedly have on tape having sex with underage girls. Why did Jeffrey Epstein serve just 13 months in jail for his crimes? Were Epstein and his friends linked to another elite child sex trafficking network? One recently exposed by a woman named Kendall on Dr. Phil's show. Kendall spoke about private parties and islands where she and other children would be taken to be tortured and raped by high-ranking law enforcement officials, major sports figures, and top US politicians. My whole life I traveled all over the world and would go to some of the biggest events to meet clients and have sex with them. They were all extremely rich and prominent members of society. The man who owns me is smart and rich. He has connections with very powerful people all over the world. Who were these people? Is she referring to Epstein's Orgy Island? I can tell you that a very reliable source has confirmed to us that Kendall has in fact been trafficked, raped, molested, and severely abused by a very large, very dangerous organization. In 2010, Laura Silsby, former director of the New Life Children's Refuge, was arrested for attempting to traffic 33 children out of Haiti. Silsby's lawyer and his wife were later arrested on suspicion of involvement in an international human trafficking ring. Why did Bill Clinton intervene to secure the release of all of Silsby's co-conspirators? Why did Clinton help get Silsby's sentence reduced from conspiracy and child abduction to just, quote, arranging irregular travel? Why were Silsby's charges reduced just three days after Clinton landed in Haiti? Why was Hillary Clinton interested in the case? Last year, former child actor and Lord of the Rings star Elijah Wood said powerful figures in the movie business were protecting paedophiles. Who were these monsters that preyed upon children at Hollywood parties? How many famous faces are among the 100 active paedophiles in Hollywood referenced by Anne Henry. Are they the same predators who abused Corey Feldman and other child actors in the 1980s? I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. There was a circle of older men that surrounded themselves around this group of kids. Does this Hollywood pedo cult stretch back to the 70s when Roman Polanski was arrested for having sex with a 13-year-old girl before fleeing America. Why have prominent politicians and Hollywood heavyweights like Meryl Streep consistently defended Polanski, a fugitive 
pedophile. Um, yes, uh, Roman Polanski. <clears throat> I'm very sorry that he's in jail. In 2012, it was revealed that British entertainer Jimmy Savile had sexually abused hundreds of young children for decades. Who among those in the British establishment that Savile was so close to knew about his activities. Who were the other masked participants in Savile's satanic ceremonies during which children were raped? Who were the other participants during another satanic abuse ceremony that took place on a quote, wealthy London street? Why was Savile's connection with what MP Tom Watson called quote, a powerful paedophile network linked to Parliament and Number 10 not properly investigated. How come knowledge of Savile's abuse of children was circulating as far back as 1978, and yet he remained free for over three decades? Jimmy Savile, I think he's a hypocrite. I bet he's into all kinds of seediness that we all know about, but are not allowed to talk about. I know some rumors. I bet none of this will be allowed out. The fact that in 1978, at the height of the Sex Pistols explosion, there you are saying about Jimmy Savile, he was into all kinds of seediness that we all knew about, we weren't allowed to talk about it, I know some rumours. So you, you had heard the kind of thing that we now know about him or, yeah. or stuff like that? Yeah. I found myself being banned from BBC Radio there for quite a while for my contentious behaviour. Why did the BBC cancel a Newsnight investigation into the abuse that was set to air in 2011 after Savile's death? Was TV presenter Jill Dando professionally murdered because she was about to expose, quote, big name stars at the BBC who were involved in the abuse? Why was an innocent, mentally unstable man blamed for Jill Dando's murder and locked up for seven years on flimsy evidence. In 2014, London police publicly said they believed allegations that, quote, a ring of prominent politicians and members of the establishment abused and terrorized children as young as seven more than 30 years ago and went on to kill three young boys. Who were these prominent politicians? One of the victims who blew the whistle on the abuse handed a list of VIP names to the police. The allegations beggar belief. Young boys driven around London and delivered to abuse parties. MPs, police officers and other pillars of the British establishment engaged in depraved acts of abuse with children. And now the latest shocking claim, at least three murders linked to a network of VIP perverts. An internal Home Office inquiry last year discovered 114 files on the issue had gone missing. We're talking about the worst kind of crime committed by the people who are supposed to be running the country. Why, after initially going public with their belief that the claims were true, did police subsequently close the investigation in 2016? Was it for the same reason that police shelved an investigation into the same Dolphin Square paedophile cult in 1988 on the orders of those at the top? And who was the Tory minister seen in a child sex abuse video handed to MI5 in 1982? Who were the 20 former MPs, government ministers, judges and other prominent figures who abused children for decades, according to former child protection manager Peter McKelvey? There's been an extremely powerful elite amongst the highest levels of the political classes uh, for as long as I've been alive, uh, and I'm 65 now. Uh, and there's been sufficient reason to investigate it over and over again, certainly for the last 30 years. And there's always been the block uh, and the cover-up and the collusion to prevent that happening. Paedophile MP Cyril Smith abused boys for four decades and was protected by the British establishment. Who else are they protecting? Who protected the Pakistani rape gang that was allowed to abuse and traffic 1,400 girls in Rotherham for over a decade. In 2004, Belgian Marc Dutroux was convicted of kidnapping, torturing and sexually abusing six young girls, four of whom he murdered. How was he able to kidnap, rape and murder young children right under the noses of the police in this modern European country? Was he protected? Why did police visit Dutroux's home and hear screaming children in the basement? 
only to claim it was the sound of kids playing outside and then leave? Why were surveillance tapes showing Dutro constructing the entrance to the dungeon where the kidnapped girls were held? seized by police, but never viewed. Who were the high-level politicians that Dutro named as members of the powerful network he was procuring children for? Why did Jean-Marc Conoro, the original judge in the case, break down in tears before speaking of shadowy, quote, figures determined to stop the full truth coming out. Who were the members of the government Conoro said were protecting the real suspects in the trafficking of children? I don't believe that there is one person in this country who knows the full story. Were these the same aristocrats involved in the abuse of Annika Lucas and other children in Belgium in the late 60s and early 70s? And the children were the commodity, the highest, the most valued commodity, and were used for sex mostly. But there were a number of aristocrats that were part of this club who also liked killing children. In 2010, numerous prominent individuals in Portugal were convicted for their involvement in the sexual abuse of more than 100 orphan children. They included a TV presenter, a governor, and a UNESCO ambassador. Seven people, including a former ambassador and a former television presenter, face more than 800 charges. Numerous other senior MPs and members of Portugal's elite were linked to the paedophile ring. Uh, a member of from that children's home took boys from there and uh, procured them for paedophiles, for, for Portuguese men, uh, who then took these boys away to other places where they were sexually abused. Many prominent Portuguese people have been implicated in this case. Those facts are confirmed by the court, so the crimes were committed. It's named names. Carlos Silvino, quote, procured boys for a powerful group of clients. But who were they? According to former Secretary of State for Families, Teresa Costa Macedo, these high-profile paedophiles included diplomats and politicians, but only a handful of people were ever convicted. Why were most of them never brought to justice? And what was the identity of the elitists in France for whom children were provided for sadomasochistic orgies by serial killer Patrice Allegri? Everything I just said is documented and the links are in the description. So we're faced with two possibilities. Either this is all just one huge conspiracy theory and I'm making it all up, or there's a pattern wherein the most high-profile sex trafficking bust, members of the elite are involved in the ritual sexual abuse of children. The evidence clearly suggests the latter. And none of that evidence, not a single piece of it, has anything to do with Pizzagate. It's important to emphasise that there are numerous paedophile scandals which have been proven to be fake. The result of mass hysteria or contrived panic. For example, the daycare allegations of the 80s and early 90s that were blamed on a readiness to believe false accusations. And Pizzagate may well fall into that category. However, that can't be said for any of the examples I provided in this video. My final question is this. Given that the Trump administration has acted aggressively to arrest sex traffickers, with more than 1,500 arrests in his first month in office alone, is this what Trump truly meant when he said he was going to drain the swamp. And is a huge part of the establishment's war on Trump centered on their fear that the net is closing on their sordid, illegal activities.